All right, so let's talk about file I.O. You can read and write files. So you can create a data file. A, files are structured. Remember, these files originally were on Hollerith cards. So it's just flat files, so many spaces for each entry. And now you can create a COBOL program, which will, this is read file. And so it's got an input output section, which we haven't used before. And its organization is line sequential, and it's going to call this data one. So then we have a data division and we define it. Here's the picture. It has something called EID, employee ID, which is a two digit number. And then it has a name, which is a 10 digit string. That's it. All right. And you define a working storage section here with uh, particular values of that. And now you open the input named employee and um, perform until you get end of file equals yes. Read employee into employee zero. And at the end, move yes into uh, this variable, WSEOF, which I defined up here as the marker of the end of file. And that's the story. And if you're not at the end, then print out the results. So that will read the file. Let me just do this one. This is nano data one. So it's clear. Nano data one. Okay, so it contains entries for three people. And now I'm going to call this uh, read file. And notice the file name is here. All right, save that. Now I'm going to compile it. All right, now I'm going to run it. And you see, it did successfully read the values from the file and print them out and then have a blank line at the end, but that's not too bad. Well, because I pressed enter after the last record, I created a blank record after it. All right. And here's the one I talked about. Now that you know how to read from a file, which is essential. Now here's another one, a challenge two. I say this, you have three seconds to respond. Too late. So if I refresh it and act fast, maybe I can make it in time. I did make it in time, but I had the wrong user agent. So you have to make COBOL programs to read this and then reply. And so the, the way I figured out how to do that was with file IO. You can see how I did it here. First, I run one program and put it in a file named foo. Now, there's like a two or three second delay before it comes back. So I put the ampersand here to come back right away. So this line will execute and put the data in a flag file foo. The next program will read it, parse it, and send it up. And I can just run this one and press up arrow and run the next one. After they're ready, I was able to do it in two seconds pretty easily. And then you get the flag. So it's just a test to see if you can figure this all out. And you also have to figure out how to parse something, uh, which you can do by defining substrings. And then there are tables. Uh, so I want to take a line of text and shift things. I'll take one word. I want to break a Caesar cipher is what's going on. It's going to move the letters forward. This moves the letters forward, I, J, K, L. It moves them all forward in the alphabet. So this will be a brute force search through all possible Caesar ciphers. And so then you can decrypt this. And here's where you use tables. Um, you can define a um, table here. See a row occurs three times. Here's the picture of the row. And uh, then you can display various items. Your row one, two, three, and cell one, one, two, two, and three, three. So it's a, a way to have organized data. And now you can write a program that does tic-tac-toe and figures out whether someone has won or not. And I've got, uh, you can then do an at-base substitution cipher that goes 
change this to A to Z and B to Y and so on. And you can do keyword substitution where you have the word zero and then you put all the other letters in order to do an arbitrary substitution. These are all things that go pretty well. All right. Anyway, there's a few more challenges to check out. <laughs>